Okay, I'm going to show you how to install and remove the SD card from your ST10. So the SD card is under the battery compartment. And we'll go ahead and pull our battery. Go ahead and carefully pull the battery. You don't have to disconnect it, but if you want to, it's real simple. You can just disconnect it right here. And this slot right here is where your SD card is. Now, be aware that, I mean, these are sensitive electronics in the wintertime, uh, static electricity is a big deal around here. Uh, I've fried a couple of components in the past. So if you have an ESD bracelet, uh, you could wear that. Or if you're barefoot, um, then your ground potential is going to be minimized as well. So just make sure you're aware of static electricity. To open this, uh, it's got a little drawing or a little arrow on it that says uh, open this way and lock this way. So we'll open it up. And you see right here, these are where the contacts meet the contacts of your SD card. So you line it up into place and it'll fit nicely. Go ahead and close this back over it and lock it into place. Reconnect your battery. Tuck the extra wire in this little corner right here. And now you're good to go. Uh, this is the same method that you use to uh, update the firmware, and there are directions on Unique's website how to do that, so I won't go into that. But uh, it's nice to have a video to show you how to put that card in. So now you're good to go. Uh, whenever you record video uh, with your camera on your Q500, that SD card is going to make a file that's going to record what your screen sees here. So it's a little FPV file, and I'll show you how to access that in a moment. Okay, so the file that the ST10 recorded, it stopped or closed out the file as soon as it started getting just a little bit of frame loss. I actually got a little bit further uh, with just a little bit of frame loss, but the frame loss really started right when we got to this shed right here. So since the ST10 didn't record telemetry, um, I know looking at the screen it was about 2,000 feet away, but let's look, uh, let's use Google Earth and figure out uh, just exactly how far it was. So our launch point was right here. And we, the video started to get frame loss right about at this shed and I actually stopped right about here. So to that shed where we started getting frame loss was 1,926.96 feet on the ground. And that's where I just got a little bit of frame loss. So let's calculate the slant distance on that. All right, so using our basic mathematics, I flew at 400 feet, and our distance again was 1926. So 
So our total distance, uh, slant distance, was 1,967.1 feet. And that was with uh, the camera angled up. Okay, so as you can see, I'm still flying forward a little bit, and right about there is where the video completely stopped. And uh, I sat there for a minute and kind of angled my controller to see if I could get the video to come back, uh, but it would not uh, come back at that point. So here in a second, I went ahead and brought it back. Now one thing I have noticed uh, when flying the Q500 and the ST10, if you're flying and you lose video uh, momentarily uh, for a few seconds, as long as you uh, reacquire it fairly quickly, um, the video will come right back. But if you set out of range for a significant, significant period of time, uh, it takes a while for the camera and the ST10 to reconnect. So I started bringing it back at this point and uh, seeing where I could get the uh, ST10 to reconnect. And it ended up reconnecting about 600 foot distance. And once I got to that point, uh, I flew it back out uh, with the antenna or, and the camera angled down to see how that would affect my range. Okay, so right here is the point where we started getting a little bit of frame loss and the local recording on the ST10 cut out. As you can tell, we got significantly further and that's due to the design and the mounting of the antenna inside the camera on the Q500. So with the camera angled down, you actually can get a little bit more range because instead of going through the center or the hole of the antenna, you're seeing it sideways and that's how that antenna radiates most efficiently. So again, uh, we're going to calculate where it was we first got our little bit of frame loss. We've got our takeoff point, and we flew down here, and we lost our frames. We started getting that little bit of loss right about here, right before that tree. And as you can see, we've got 2320.95 feet. So we're 400 feet high, and we got 20 through 20 on the ground, and so our total slant distance was 2,354.23 feet. Uh, continuing on, you'll see that I got a little bit further before I totally lost uh, video. Alright, so let's look at that final distance where we lost all video completely. We got all the way down here. We got all the way to this road. That was a total distance, uh, ground distance, of 2,473.84 feet, or we'll just say 2473. So 2473, total slant distance was 2,505 feet. So 2,505 feet, and that's a stock Q500, stock antennas, uh, current firmware. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to recover the video file that was saved to your SD card within your ST10 controller. So uh, after you've completed your flying, go ahead and turn off your controller and your Q500 and remove the SD card and insert it into your computer or card reader. Uh, when you get there, you're going to come up to three folders and you're going to pick FPV video and you're going to pick local. Now this file is an AVC file. Uh, I tried several players that I had installed on the computer, including VLC, but uh, nothing that I had wanted to read them. So let's look at the details on that file. Uh, as you can see, it is an advanced video codec, or AVC file. 
uh, recorded at 563 kilobits per second, and the resolution is 432 by 240. Uh, now there is uh, a method that I used uh, to be able to view this video, and I just did uh, a simple conversion. Uh, I have a program here called uh, WinFF. It's actually called uh, FFmpeg, and it's a free program. Um, I've got a really old version. I've had this on here for a long time. But if you go to ffmpeg.org, uh, you can convert all kinds of files with it. And to use this program, you just find the uh, file that you want to convert. And I can also directly play it with this program, too. If I bring it up here, uh, it'll let me play. But to convert it, I've selected it, and I'm going to convert it to an AVI file, and just click Convert. And that's all there is to it. Uh, it just takes it a few seconds, and then once that conversion is done, uh, you should be able to play it with uh, Media Player or VLC. Thanks for watching this DronesAndSC.com video. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you found this video helpful. As always, we can be reached at our website, www.dronesandsc.com, and our Facebook group. Stay tuned as we have many videos on the way, and we look forward to helping you realize your dreams of flight.